So today, we're deciding to break financial limitations. Oh, I didn't know there are people who have, there are so many people who have issues. I thought you came because there is pain somewhere. <laughs> oh, I see. So the major pain is pain in the pocket. Pain with the bank account. Well, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that everyone with any garment of wretchedness and any garment of poverty and empty-handedness, today they shall be broken. In the name of Jesus, they shall be broken. I prophesy supernatural supplies. My God and your God shall release your supplies according to his riches in glory. Shout the loudest. Amen. Breaking financial limitations. Our scripture is 3 John verse 2. 3 John verse 2. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. That is God speaking. When we are talking about breaking financial limitation, it means that there are financial limitations. People can be rich or be wealthy or have money through many means. By sheer hard work, By the acquisition of knowledge and the deployment of skill. By the exhibition of wisdom like Solomon. And some outrightly go into the occult realm to try to make money by occultic and ritualistic means. But what I am about to deal with is where God connects a person to his supply. It is beyond what your sweat can do. It's beyond what your wisdom can do. It's beyond what your energy can do. And it is when God connects you with his resources and also gives you the health to enjoy the resources. There are people with wealth who lack health. There are people of the world with wealth who lack peace. There are people of the world with wealth who have zero relationship with God on their highway to hell. That was why the Bible said, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So we are not talking about that realm. There is a possibility of getting so much in this world and losing your soul. Where you have no relationship with God. But I'm talking about people of God being able to be connected to the resources of God. Psalm 24 verse 1 said, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God said, I own the whole of the universe. Everything you have on earth is mine. Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 to 9. The silver is mine, the gold is mine. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. If you want to be connected to the resources of God and break financial limitations over your life, what do you do? One, Put God first in life. Put God first. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Put God 
first. Put God first. What does it mean to put God first? It means that God is the most important consideration of your life's decisions. It means that God is more important to you than anybody and anything under heaven. Put God first. For me, I cannot greet any mortal man in the morning until I have greeted God. For me, food cannot enter this mouth in the morning until the word of God has entered my spirit. For me, my money can't be spent on myself until I have given God his portion. Put God first. Number two, know God's will. For your finances. What is the will of God? What does God will for you? Because the Bible said. In John chapter 8 verse 32. It said. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Know God's will. For your resources. No. What does God want for you? Does God want his people to be poor and wretched and broken and beaten and battered? Does God want his children to be beggars and paupers? Does God want us to end as mockeries in this world? You know in those days, there was a very, very erroneous thought that church is meant to be a, a, a place of poor people. So they used to say as poor as church rat. Because of lack of knowledge. But it has changed long ago. This place is not a poor looking place does it? We must know. That we serve the one who owns the universe. You remember the song? He owns the universe. He owns the silver and gold. The earth and all its fullness, it all belongs to you. There's nothing you don't have. There's nothing you can give, Lord. You are the hope of all the living, the source of everything. You are, you are, you are. You are the rose of Sharon. The lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. You are, you are, you are, you are the root of David. The great I am, that I am, the all sufficient God. You know what happened to me? That song came here during this construction. I stood on that side, the first gallery, when they were decking that first gallery. And I stood on the decking and I looked around and I saw the volume of concrete being poured. And I saw, I saw laborers, thousands of people walking everywhere. All of them being paid daily, millions daily. I saw massive iron rods. I saw trucks driving everywhere. And I stood and all of a sudden the words came. He owns the universe. How would he build a thing like this? He owns the silver and gold. The earth and all his fullness. It all belongs to you. There's nothing you don't have. There's nothing you can give, Lord. You are the hope of all the living. The source of everything you must know what we are seeing here is the least God can do more to come look at the number say more to come so you must know the will of God that it is his will how many of you will be excited to have your children beg before they eat 
to have your children with shoes that are scattered and trousers that are that, 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 are, that have holes if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy ghost and every other good thing to all who serve him somebody say the loudest amen, amen. must come to the point where you know i don't serve a poor god and i refuse to live a poor life take your seat is God speaking to somebody here? And then you see it in the book of Psalm 35. All right, start from Job first. Job 36, verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If I'm obeying God, if I am serving God, I spend my days in prosperity and years in pleasure. And then you go to Psalm 35 and verse 27 let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause yeah let them say continually let the lord be magnified that has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant and you shift from there to psalm 37 verse 25 i have been young and now i am old yet have i not seen the righteous forsaken nor his children begging for food Verse 26, he is merciful, ever merciful. He is a lender, not a beggar. He lendeth, not a borrower. He lendeth, and his seed is blessed forever. The knowledge of, of, of his will is the guarantee of your win. W I N win you win in life because you are connected to the knowledge of his will you win in life because you are connected to his will so first of all put god first number two know god's will for your resources number three maintain the abundance mindset maintain the mindset Proverbs 23 verse 7. He said, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your thought determines your life. Then Proverbs chapter 21 verse 5. He said, the thought of the diligent only tend to plenteousness. But of everyone that is hasty, only to want. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above. All that we ask or think what crosses your mind determines what crosses your life i never pictured myself as a beggarly pastor or a beggarly person forever your picture determines your future your mentality determines your reality you don't think down on yourself and rise up in life you maintain it that was number three number four Possess kingdom vision. He says, seek first the kingdom. Possess kingdom vision. If God empowers you, what will you do with the empowerment? You see, in Psalm 132 from verse 1, David had a vision. He said, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swear unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob surely I will not come into thy tabernacle the tabernacle of my house nor go up into my bed I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob I cannot sleep until I've built God a house. I can't sleep until I've built God a church. And when he talked like that, then God released upon him stupendous supply. In First Chronicles chapter 29, he said, out of my own proper good, I have laid off verse 2 and verse 3. Out of my proper good, I have given for the house. I have prepared with all my might for the house of God, the gold for the things of gold. Is God speaking to somebody here today? Kingdom vision. All my life, I kept on thinking of how I can, I can make money and use it to preach the gospel. How
how I can how I can arrive at I never planned to be a pastor I trained as a medical doctor my wife trained as a medical doctor all I wanted to do was to be sure that I preach the gospel with massive resources my mind is to build churches personally from my pocket and as of today God has helped us and that is happening and it's see, what is your vision what do you want to do are you looking for materialism are, is it materialism that is your in your in your mind you want to drive a big car you want to build a big house you want to do this and that and you don't care about the, the mission and don't care about the gospel then it is not God you want to deal with you can deal with the devil am I communicating in Psalm 122 verse 9 the psalmist said because of the house of the Lord our God I will seek your good one translation I think the NIV or the New Living Translation he said because of the house of God I will seek your prosperity I will seek your prosperity I am not looking for money just for my sake but in order to expand the kingdom in order to increase and enlighten the kingdom for the sake of the house of the Lord I will seek do you have it in NIV or one of the new of, the, of those translations for the sake of the house of the Lord our God I pray for your prosperity for the sake of the house of God somebody say for the sake of the house of God say it louder say for the sake of the house of God say it louder say for the sake of the house of God I, I pray do you understand what I'm saying let somebody say Lord only me want to build this kind of house for God give me the money and I'll build the house during this construction we had one or two people who did one or two things somebody say I want to take the whole of the glass the whole of the glass and that one, let me not mention the amount all manner I want to take this and for the sake of your house maintain kingdom vision kingdom vision is what brings kingdom provision and you cannot say I will do things when I have it you begin to do it with what you have then you will eventually have what you need numbers five exist as a blessing you want to see the blessing of God in your life yourself must be a blessing God told Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 2 and 3 he said I will bless you and you shall be a blessing I will make of you a great nation I will bless you and make your name great and thou shall be a blessing exist as a blessing a blessing to who a blessing to the poor a blessing to the widow a blessing to the orphan a blessing to the priest to the missionary a blessing to the kingdom of God just exist as a blessing and you are going to break the back of the spirit of wretchedness am I communicating did first billionaire in the world dollar billionaire was called John D Rockefeller that man began by giving the tithe of one dollar out of his mother taught him tithe and he started tithing from that day till the day of his death one day he gave one forty million dollars to the university that his church was building and people asked him and say how can you give such amount of money to church he said God gave me the money I am giving it back to God what is your business Rockefeller gave money for the tackling of sicknesses and diseases while I was a medical student we had Rockefeller Foundation doing medical work in Nigeria 
River blindness, vesicle, vesicle, vesicle fistula, and several other diseases. He brought, he has died long ago, but his money is still blessing his generation, and the money hasn't finished. Am I communicating at all? He said, I will bless you, and thou shalt be a blessing. In the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 35, he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. I have shown you all things. Well, that it is more blessed to give. He said, I have showed you all things. How that so laboring, you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, It is more blessed to give. Than to receive. Who are you blessing? Who is feeding from your table other than you and your wife? And you don't have to have plenty to start. You can start from where you are. Why do you allow offering basket to pass and your hand is empty? What do you understand about the tithes and giving to the kingdom? Am I communicating at all? When these things are done according to how scripture said it then the yoke of poverty can be broken that is possess kingdom vision all right put god first know god's will for your resources maintain the abundance mindset possess kingdom vision exist as a blessing that was number five another way to say it is uphold the practice of the covenant that was number five and let me read two passages to you. Second Chronicles, chapter, second, second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six, all the way to verse seven. Second Corinthians nine, six to seven. He said, "But this I say: we, he we sow sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he we sow bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver." Hear this. Prayer for money is a waste of time where the lifestyle of giving is not in place. Give and it shall be given to you. See time and harvest shall not cease. Somebody say, give God, I am asking for money. And he sees poor people, he cannot give them one naira. He sees widows and orphans, he doesn't, he's not moved. He comes to church, he's not moved about anything. Money enters his hand, he doesn't think about God at all. He's praying for money. That prayer is a waste of prayer. That prayer must be backed up with action. The action that touch people's lives and touch the kingdom of God and it will produce. So, exist as a blessing. Number six, observe the law of diligence. The law of diligence. The dignity, embrace the dignity of labor. Walk. 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 Scripture said, he who does not walk should not eat. Walk. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. He said, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent make it rich he become it poor that deal it with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent make it rich to be slack is to lack when you see a man slack about everything, he can't escape lack. The hand of the diligent make it rich. Is God speaking to somebody here? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. The soul of the slugger, the lazy. He desireth and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The soul of the sluggard desireth and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent 
shall be made far. Yeah, the man is tired, he's, he's exhausted, he's, he's lazy, he cannot wake up in the morning, waiting for money to meet him at home. He will never escape lack. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 6. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them. 11, 16. A gracious woman retaineth honor and strong men, energetic men, diligent men, work full men, retain riches, strong men, not lazy men. Somebody is sleeping at home in the morning and they said what and everybody who is going to work is dressing and going for work and he's sleeping at home and they say why are you at home he said i don't have work wow is that how to get to work you sleep at home until work meets you at home i don't care whether you are speaking in tongues while you are in that home get out of that bed hit the street i'm speaking tongues from street to street and from office to office that is how to speak in tongues You see what 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 said? 2 Thessalonians 3 said, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any will not walk, neither should he eat. If any will not walk, he is not permitted to eat. Food can't cross his mouth for any reason. Let me tell you some stories. A, a graduate, he has a, a degree or a degree equivalent. A, an organization was looking for a dispatch rider. And they were looking for a, a secondary school, ordinary level certificate for somebody to do such a work. And he applied for the work with his degree. And they said, no, it is not you we are looking for. You are too qualified for the work. We are looking for secondary school certificate holder. He told them, I want to do this work. You say, I shouldn't work. What should I be going to do? I want to work. Do you know what they did? They employed him and upgraded him. They said, because you have decided to bring yourself low, and do this work now you are at the supervisor level we are still looking for somebody to do that work it was the law of work that gave him job am i communicating a master's degree holder went to a construction site such as this and began to do daily laborers work carrying concrete on his head for daily pay msc architecture he didn't have any work to do and he doesn't want to stay at home. And he came and he's doing the laborer's work. And the owner of the site came one day and saw him. The way he was moving and conducting himself was different from the illiterate laborers. So he said, who are you? He said, sir, I'm an architect. What? At what level? MSC. And you are doing this work? Yes, there's no other work to do. The man said, no way. You are now, I upgrade you to be project architect. He shifted him from daily labor. Why? Because he decided to work. Am I communicating? One man went to, to work in a certain place. And they, after interview, they said, well, we know that you are qualified for the work. But you don't have work experience job experience we are looking for people with job experience you know what he told them he said can you employ me one year free of charge don't pay me salary let me get job experience then after i get the job experience interview me after one year <laughs> and the people said no way we, we can't send a person like you away you're already employed am i communicating at all 
in the course of our recruitment of some minor staff, or well, low level staff here, we recruited security and we so much need for security staff. For, you know, the place is a, it's a bit big. And we noticed that there were several degree holders. About nine or so out of 50 who came to apply to do gate man's work and security work and so on. And when we noticed that, our step number one was to pay them higher than security, normal security pay. Our next assignment is to identify their specialty and position them correctly. They humbled themselves in enough to say, I don't have anything to do. Why not? I do that. Beloved, don't waste your time. If work don't meet you, meet work. Refuse to be refused. Deny to be denied. Just tell the devil, you can't keep me down. So if you are trusting God to break financial limitation, you must observe the law of diligence. Am I communicating? Can I go ahead? Anybody getting anything at all? Number seven, maintain financial integrity. Maintain financial integrity. Financial integrity is the basis of kingdom prosperity. Financial integrity. Job chapter 1 verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz. His name was Job. The man was perfect and upright. He was one who feared God. Perfect, upright, feared God, avoided evil. And what happened? And that man was the greatest. His substance was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Greatest. Integrity is not a minus. It is a plus. Ah. Uprightness is not a disadvantage. Some people say in this kind of country where you are, you have to do, you have to do, do it, do it their style. You have to bribe somebody. You have to do this. Let me tell you. If you follow the way of the people, you end with the plague of the people. Plague of the people. Crookedness. The way of crookedness is the way of wretchedness. Crookedness today equals wretchedness tomorrow. There are people whose children are suffering today because of corrupt life yesterday. Am I communicating? No double dealings. No fraudulent oppressions. You don't expect God to bless you by double dealing and cutbacks and inflation of figures and those kind of things. You don't expect God. You don't mix petroleum products so you can increase the volume of it in order to increase the profit and expect the God of heaven to bless you. Am I communicating at all? There are people who are wondering why nothing is working. You can't do it the way of the world and experience the hand of God. You can't. Somebody went into civil service with a false declaration of age and is wondering why his life is experiencing all manner of turbulence. Hello. One day someone brought me a, 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 a CV and I was to pray for her and I saw the CV, date of birth, 1975. 
is looking for work or something. And I look at this person and I know that he's old, the person was older than that age. I say, oh, how old? This is not your age. Say, yes, sir. That was someone born in the 60s. Who's 60? 1975. And I said, you expect me to ask the God of truth to bless a lie. I should pray for the God of truth to bless a lie and give you a testimony. We don't function like that. That's why many are stranded. God is eager to make many of his children the head and not the tail. But many of the children of God are playing it the way of the world. So God is saying, I am limited. A man came from the UK some years ago and he brought his wife. He's doing ministry there. Christian ministry there and he brought his wife and I said so and he brought his wife to show me and after I have prayed for them I I said so when are you going when are you when are you going he said my wife is here but I'm there I said why the two of you should, should be together so when are you going with her he said I will, until I finalize my paperwork there I will come and pick her I said what is the pro problem with the paperwork he said oh no Originally, I had um, done a marriage with somebody there just for the sake of getting papers. And now my document is still in the name of that woman that is not his wife, that he fraudulently had to organize and arrange a marriage. You see, after I finish with that one, then I can start the process of this one. I look at him, I said, and who are you preaching for? Pastor is telling me it's very, very common. Who are you preaching? And you expect God and you want to pray for God to bless the people in that church? I, you know what I told him? Very brutal. I said what you are doing there is a lie. The reason why you are there is a lie. Your vision is a lie. Your expectations are all lies. Return back to Nigeria and start afresh. You can't do that. No matter what happens, don't bow for crooked oppressions. Don't allow anybody to ask you for bribe before they get you, give you a job. If the job will not come without a bribe, let the job go to hell. I'm not communicating. This is one reason why many people, they are children of God. They, their lives are not thriving. They are, nothing is succeeding. They are not succe successful. They are struggling, rising and crashing. They are pursuing businesses, pursuing things, but nothing is working. Because they have not set things straight. Like I told you at first, it is not a disadvantage to be upright. It is not a disadvantage to have integrity. Look at what Proverbs 13 verse 22 said. And then I'll begin to round off. A good man leave it an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just just remain neat and there is wealth transfer crooked people the wealth of the wicked they are just wasting their time heaping it for the righteous Proverbs chapter 20 verse 7 the just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Do you know the meaning? Provided the man remains in integrity, his blessing cannot finish in his generation. He will leave it for his children. His children are blessed after him. The just man walketh in his integrity. He does everything clear and clean and neat. By the time God is true with him, his children will still be enjoying the blessing he left behind because he walked in his, his integrity. Any money God does not give you does not add anything to you. 
it comes to take something from you. Ask Adam. God gave Adam all the fruit to eat. There was one he told him not to eat. Adam decided to eat the fruit God asked him not to eat. And that fruit he decided to eat that God asked him not to eat canceled everything. God said, eat everything, don't eat this one. Adam said, no, I will eat this one. And God said, okay, since you have eaten this one, don't eat anyone again. Move out of this garden. Get out of the garden. Go and look for what to eat by yourself. Anything that you didn't get by right, you didn't get by favor, you didn't get by labor, does not add to your life. If you got it crookedly, you got it fraudulently, it came to take something away from your life. But today I see mercy coming for somebody. Finally, maintain the attitude of gratitude and praise. Maintain. Don't be a permanent complainer. Don't be a permanent grumbler. Don't be a permanent murmurer. Maintain the attitude of gratitude. Maintain the attitude of gratitude. You know what the Bible said? Psalm 67 verse 5 all the way. It said, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Joel chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. I like you to, that scripture is very, very serious. He said, be ye ashamed, O ye husband men, how, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the valley, because the harvest of the field is perished. Hold on. What, what made the harvest perished? Verse 12. The vine has dried up. Business is not moving. The fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are withered. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. When your joy dries, your resources dries. Joy is withered. When grumbling continues, struggling continues. There are those who are permanently grumbling. Nothing is working. Nation is bad. I don't know how I can succeed. I've tried my best. No. If you thank God for Gary, that you have seen. He will make you to see spaghetti. If you thank God. For the beetle. That you are driving. He will promote you to the land cruiser. Jesus saw five loaves. And two fishes. Instead of saying what is this. He gave thanks. And it multiplied. John chapter 6 verse 11 and 12. Somebody said, what is this among so many? Jesus said, bring it. He lifted up the loaves. Father, thank you. Thank God for what? It, this cannot do anything. This cannot do anything. Yet he said, thank God. Appreciation is fertilization for multiplication. What did I say? Appreciation is fertilization for multiplication. Is fertilization unto multiplication. If you are only, you know some people, it was when they received their salaries that they killed the salary. The money entered their hands and said, what is this? 
This one now, what will he do now? And the potential of that money died. They could do nothing. But you didn't know that there are those who don't have any salary at all. Some people, somebody sent them a favor. Maybe you are asking for one million, they sent you 100,000. So what is this? What is this? And God said, what is this? Before the 100,000 came, what did you have? Nothing. All right, I will make sure this is nothing. And it disappears. But when you say, oh Lord, thank you for this 100,000. God said, I will touch somebody else to send you 500,000. And then touch another person to send you 1 million. Appreciation is application for more. That was what God's servant Bishop David Oyedepo said. When you appreciate God, you have applied. Lord, I apply for more. Hallelujah. I am going to stop here now. By the time you put all these things together, let's look at it one by one. The first is that you should put God first. Know God's will for your resources. Maintain their mindset of abundance, not a poverty mindset. Not a wretchedness mindset. Not a beggarly mindset. Don't move about looking for who to beg from. Possess kingdom vision. What will you do if God blesses you? Exist as a blessing. Touch lives. Invest in the kingdom. Uphold the practice of the covenant. And number six, observe the law of diligence. Don't let laziness be identified with you. Let nobody ever see you and call you or think of you as lazy. Seven, maintain financial integrity. Avoid any crooked deal. You can eat one million and lose a billion forever. Maintain financial integrity. And then, maintain the attitude of gratitude and praise. And when you have done all that together, and then you are under the prophetic coverage, and there is a witch or a wizard in your community that says you should not prosper, then it can be roasted. Because by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. Believe the Lord your God, so shall you prosper. And believe in his prophets, so shall you. Believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. And believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Second Chronicles 20, 20 B. Somebody is blessed here, say amen. amen. If you are the one blessed, shout the loudest, say amen. amen. If you are the most blessed here, shout the loud most, amen. amen.